Well, a pleasure right now to welcome our show to our show today, man. You've seen him on uh, TV, you've heard him on radio, uh, of course, with CNN for over 25 years. Uh, legendary broadcaster Larry King, who has a brand new book out. We'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, Larry joins us uh, from California today. And uh, Larry, I know you just told me you took the kids to school today, so uh, you're a busy guy, huh? Yeah, you know, even though I kind of semi-retired, I do four specials a year now for CNN. But uh, I am uh, still finding myself busy. I've been in Portugal. I've been in Korea. I, I'm in a keynote speaker at digital conventions. I'm doing a comedy act. I've been in Atlantic City, Indianapolis, Boston, Vegas. And I'm coming to Sarasota in, uh, in December. Along, I'm going to Tampa, Sarasota, Miami. And I stand up and do stories, uh, funny true stories out of my past. And I got two little boys that play little league baseball. I'm one of their coaches. <laughs> I'm talking to other people about doing some other kind of television work. So yes, it is semi-retirement. The age to age to semi. No, I was going to ask you. Your schedule now is probably busier than it was, at least as far as traveling goes. With the uh, yeah, but I'm going to take July. I want to take July and August uh, off, and I got one trip. I got this weekend. I got one trip. I got to make to Moscow in early July. Uh, I'm speaking at this big Putin conference. And, uh, but that I'll be gone like three, four days, and then I'll whack out. I'm not going to do anything else until September. And, uh, kids will be in baseball camp. In fact, my son, Chance, he goes to camp in Bradenton at the, the IMG camp. Oh, IMG, sure, yeah. That's, uh, yeah. Uh, he's been going there with them for now for three years. And, uh, the other brother, his 11 year old brother, is going to a football camp in Provo, Utah, at BYU. So I'll have some rest for the kids. Maybe me and the wife will do something nice to see her again. Right. <laughs> well, I know she, she uh, opens for you in the uh, comedy act. Doesn't she sometimes do the singing parts? Sometimes, yeah. She did, uh, she did Vegas. Uh, she was sensational, by the way, last Saturday night for Vegas. And, uh, but no, Macy's with really is mostly me. But she's, I think she'll do uh, maybe New York with me in, in, uh, in, uh, in November. But what's that like? To spend more time with the kids, too. What's that like, Larry? I mean, you've had all the, the great comedians on your show, but uh, now actually uh, performing in Vegas, was, was it different than you expected uh, hitting the stages out there? I know you've done well, I think, think but that. comedy is different, isn't it? Yeah, it is, but I love it. Because I've been speaking at conventions for years. Right, right. The way this happened is my nephew is a top Broadway producer, and he's produced a lot of hits. And he... Uh, has seen me work in a convention, I think it was for, for AMA. And he said, you know, you take those stuff and put that together into like a Broadway act. We could really book in theaters and stuff and maybe take your Broadway. I said, sure, let's try it. I'm a good at it. The only difference is when I work conventions, I stand at a rostrum and tell stories when I do this. I work on a stage and behind me there's videos. It's very effective. It's a theatrical production. It's 90 minutes. It's very solid. But the material has been tested. So it's, and I like audiences. I like speaking. And I, I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm not nervous when I get on a stage. I'm on a high. But that, uh, it's, it's the biggest high I've had is, oddly enough, just making people laugh. I know, I heard, well, you, I heard, I heard you in an interview talking, I think, with maybe Jimmy Kimmel or somebody. You said if you weren't in broadcasting, you would have liked to have been a stand-up comedian, right? I think so, yeah. I like comics. I'm, I'm uncomfortable with comics. I like talking to them. I understand. I think it's something you're born with. I'm born with a sense of pace. My mother was very funny. I, I don't I don't take a lot of credit for it. I have good timing. Uh, in fact, you know, from broadcasting, one of the secrets is timing. Right. How to pace the show. I, I don't think you can teach that. You can teach a lot of other things, but you can't teach pace. You can't teach that little thing, that little edge when you're like telling a joke. When the pause occurs, how that, how that moment happens, that right before a punchline, right before you're hitting a high in a story, when that little moment, it's, it's so terrific if you have it. But I don't take, I really don't take credit for it. Because I had it when I was 10 years old. I was a class clown. <laughs> well, yeah, that's right. I write about that in the book, you know, how all these, how, how all these things came about. I also write about other things. I write about having prostate cancer. Right. Uh, having that be cured, if cure is the word, cured with radiation and 
it's, uh, it's not pleasant. It's not painful. It's just not pleasant. And uh, anyway, when I was talking about that about a week or so ago, and he's going through the same thing. I guess you, you're both kind of treating in different ways, but they're glad you're both doing both. Yeah, he's, so. he's doing it holistically. I, he doesn't have a trace of it. I don't have a trace of it. But he didn't. He didn't do. Uh, he didn't do radiation or anything, or take any medication. I didn't take any medication. I just did the radiation. In fact, you know, sometimes I have doubts about it because. It was so in the beginning, I mean, it was just like a trace. And I had a doctor who was very uh, uh, anxious, uh, not anxious, but conservative. He said, no, let's quit. And I asked Michael Milton's advice, who's a friend of mine and who had a tremendously high PSA, and who also had radiation, and he told me to do it. So I did it. But uh, if I had it over I'm not sure I would. Yeah, I really just had a trace. You know, most people die with it, not of it. Right, right. Uh, uh, I'm 77. Yeah. Well, I'm glad, you, glad you're doing well. I know we'll, we'll talk about the book right now, but I just want to say you are coming to Tampa. I saw the schedule at the Stras Theater in January. I know you're coming to Sarasota. We'll get the date on that, and we'll have you back on uh, a week or two before that as well. We'd love to talk to you then. But I'll come over and see you. That'd be great. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, since uh, you're not tied down to the studio anymore. <laughs> oh, I'll be there. Well, let's talk about the book, Larry. I've read uh, most of your books, and one of the great things about your books, Larry, if you read it, it's it's like you're talking to you in person. I think that's what comes across, and uh, this is the same way. Uh, it feels like you're actually talking to the reader. That's what I do. That's what I work with Cal Fussman. He's a great writer. He, we do with tapes. It takes about six months, and he would ask me questions, and I remember some of them over, then he'd, he'd have it typed out or printed it out, computed out, however they do it, and then I'd read it and edit it. And, it's supposed to be just like I'm talking, and that it should be very conversational, and, and it's also, they're quick reads, but we try to get in depth too, we, uh, and you have to be very honest when you do anything autobiographical, so you have to deal with uh, your vagaries and your minuses as well as your pluses. <laughs> Well, you've always been honest, and I grew up listening to you on the old Mutual Radio show. Uh, and, uh, I love that show. I miss it. <laughs> I miss it. I don't miss the hours. No. <laughs> but I still miss talking to the people. I, I tell you, there's nothing like radio. It, it's where I started, even though I got into television right after I started in radio. There's something about the theater of the mind that still works true. Uh, that when I turn on my radio, you know, I still am a radio freak. I listen to old-time radio. I was just um, it's this to me it's the most the, the most creative and uh, the most intimate of all the blood all the ways of reaching people. There's nothing like the sound of a voice coming from a box to me. Yeah, well, one thing I, I learned from you, Larry, uh, doing this in college radio and then uh, on a local level, but interviewing people, I think you said in one of your books, uh, they're person's last answer is your next question. Listen to them. I, I've taken that advice right. and it's worked for me very well. Obviously it's worked for you, but I see so many interviewers that are reading the questions off cards or talking off the attraction nuts. <laughs> I've never had a written question in advance because I find that when people do that, a lot of some do it very well, but when people do that, they tend not to listen to the answer because they're waiting to go to their next question. And bottom way you should do takeoffs on that. Oh, yeah. The man on the street, the guy in the man on the street interviewer. They would Wally Willie, Wally Willie, Wally Willie's greatest interviewer. And he'd say, here's a man walking down the street, sir. Oh, what is your name? I think it was John Brown. Hi, right, John, how are you? Where do you live? Hunts Point, Long Island. Oh, Hunts Point, Long Island. What place are you in New York? I'm a spy and I'm here to blow up the U.N. Oh, are you married? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and it's not that far an exaggeration. I've seen news people do that. A great quote somebody gave oh, and they right over it. <laughs> One of the I, two things I hate when I watch an interview is, is the interviewer who says, I would like to ask you this. That's what you're there for. Yeah. Or I was wondering. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> so that's what they're paying you for. And another thing is the question that isn't a question. Uh, at the end of a football game. Well, Pucks, uh, uh, you were leaving at halftime, but you had that trouble there in the third quarter. Yeah. And then they stop. Or, or talk they, about. That's another way people yeah. ask questions. Just, just talk about There's this. no question mark at the end of the sentence. So, and it, it, the secret is, there's no secret. You know, if you begin with the word why, you can't answer it in one word. And it's a very good, all questions beginning with why are pretty good questions. Yeah, they have to give you something or, or say nothing at all. <laughs> so why did you do that? <laughs> 
Well, I know uh, you're on a busy schedule today. I appreciate you taking a few minutes to... Hey, well, I'll come to Sarasota. When I come to Sarasota, I'll send you the date. I'll come over and see you and sit down and give it. Great. Truth Be Told is the name of the book put out by uh, Wine Steam Books and available everywhere right now. And uh, Larry King's been our guest. Larry, we'll see you down here later in the year. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Dad. Thanks, Dave.